It is written in the scriptures that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to die for the world, that whosoever believes on him and keeps his commandments shall be saved. While we give nothing, perhaps, for this atonement and this sacrifice, nevertheless, it has cost someone something. And I love to contemplate what it cost our Father in heaven to give us the gift of his beloved Son, that worthy Son of our Father, who so loved the world that he laid his life down to redeem the world, to save us and to feed us spiritually while we walk in this life and prepare us to go and dwell with him in the eternal worlds. I think as I read the story of Abraham's sacrifices of his son Isaac, that our father is trying to tell us what it cost him to give his son a gift to the world. Our father in heaven loved his son, Jesus Christ, better than Abraham ever loved Isaac. For our father had with him his son, our redeemer, in the eternal worlds, faithful and true for ages, standing in a place of trust and honor, and the Father loved him so dearly, and yet he allowed this well-beloved Son to descend from his place of glory and honor, where millions did him homage, down to the earth, a condescension that is not within the power of man to conceive. He came to receive the insult, the abuse, and the crown of thorns. God heard the cry of his son in that moment of great grief and agony, in the garden when the pores of his body opened and drops of blood stood upon him, and he cried out, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. I ask you, what father and mother could stand by and listen to the cry of their children in distress in this world and not render assistance? I have heard of mothers throwing themselves into raging streams when they could not swim a stroke to save their drowning children, rushing into burning buildings to rescue those whom they loved. We cannot stand by and listen to those cries without it touching our hearts. The Lord has not given us the power to save our own. He has given us faith and we submit to the inevitable. But He had the power to save and He loved His Son and he could have saved him. He might have rescued him from the insults of the crowds. He might have rescued him when the crown of thorns was placed upon his head. He might have rescued him when the sun, hanging between two thieves, was mocked with, save thyself and come down from the cross. He saved others, himself he cannot save. He listened to all this. He saw that son condemned. He saw him drag the cross through the streets of Jerusalem and faint under his load. He saw the son finally upon Calvary. He saw his body stretched out upon the wooden cross. He saw the cruel nails driven through hands and feet and the blows that broke the skin, tore the flesh, and let out the life's blood of his son. He looked upon that. Our father looked on with great grief and agony over his beloved son, until there seems to have come a moment when even our Savior cried out in despair, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? In that hour, I think I can see our dear father behind the veil, looking upon these dying struggles, until even he, could not endure it any longer. And like the mother who bids farewell to her dying child and has to be taken out of the room so as not to look upon the last struggles, so he bowed his head and hid in some part of his universe, his great heart almost breaking for the love that he had for his son. Oh, in that moment when he might have saved his son, I thank him and praise him that he did not fail us. For he had not only the love of his son in mind, but he also had love for us. I rejoice that he did not interfere and that his love for us made it possible for him to endure to look upon the sufferings of his son 
and give him finally to us, our Savior and Redeemer. Without him, without his sacrifice, we would never have come glorified into his presence. And so this is what it cost, in part, for our Father in heaven to give the gift of his Son unto men. How do I appreciate the gift? If I only knew what it cost our Father to give his Son, if I only knew how essential it was that I should have that Son and that I should receive that spiritual life that comes from that Son, I am sure I would always be present at the sacrament table to do honor to the gift that has come to us. Let us take time tonight to fill our hearts with reverence. Let us take time to remember the kindest and most loving man ever to be born into this world, our Savior and Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Let us remember not only his birth, but his life, a generous gift from a kind and loving Father. Let us also remember the gift given us from Jesus Christ himself, the gift of his love, his life, his atonement, his all.